Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mackenzie and this year I'm teaching fifth grade virtually. Now Teacher FYI is a new channel, so if you're new here, make sure to click that subscribe button so you'll be notified of all my future videos and it will also help other educators discover this channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing six ways you can use Jamboard to keep your students more engaged in a virtual setting. If you're not familiar with Jamboard and would like some extra support getting started, I do have a video that I will link down in the description below that teaches you some of the basics so that you can start using it in your classroom. So Jamboard is part of Google Suite and works as a great online interactive whiteboard and also a great collaborative tool to use with your students in a virtual classroom. So one way I love to use Jamboard is for daily check-in questions and exit tickets for my students. So to do this, I simply share the link with my students I make sure I've enabled editing access so when they click the link, it opens to a Jamboard where they can collaborate with the whole class. This is a great way for students to see their classmates' responses while also being engaged from the moment they enter that online meeting. One way to do this would be to post a question where students need to either respond using a sticky note or inserting their own image. If students need to insert their own image, they simply click the add image tab and then they can Google search an image or a GIF that they would like to add to the Jamboard. Another example would be to ask a question where students need to respond using a sticky note. Or if you have younger students, I do recommend that you create sticky notes with their names already typed up where they simply click and drag to respond to the question. You could also use an exit board style Jamboard where students simply find their student number on the board, double tap and respond to the exit question. I love to use these at the end of a lesson just to see what they've learned or give them one final check-in before they leave. You can fit up to 45 sticky notes on one Jamboard. However, the more sticky notes that there are, the smaller the font will be. So I do recommend 15 to maybe 30. I do have a few exit board templates that you can make a copy of and I'll leave a link to those in the description down below just to save you a little bit of time. So my second way to use Jamboard to engage your students is to have your students create graffiti walls and wonder walls together as a class. Graffiti walls are a great way to gauge understanding about what your students already know about a topic or using them at the end of a unit to see what your students have learned. So to do this, you would start with a blank Jamboard and share it with your whole class. They then collaborate together to add images, facts, and drawings to show what they already know about a topic or like I said, if you're using at the end of the unit to show what they have learned. You then can save the graffiti wall as a picture and then revisit throughout the unit as a discussion piece. So a similar version to the graffiti wall is a wonder wall. I love to create wonder walls with my students for science. So at the beginning of a topic, I have my students write down as many questions and wonders that they have about that new science topic. So on Jamboard, they use their sticky notes to ask the questions. And then throughout the unit, we revisit that Jamboard and see what questions we now know the answer to and can take off the wonder wall and new wonders that we now have and can add to the wonder wall. And then at the end of the unit, I usually pick one day where my students all work together to try to research and answer as many questions as they can that were on the wonder wall in order to clear our board. So my third way for you to use Jamboard with your students is to have a virtual gallery walk. Now this is something I love doing in my classroom, especially with social studies topics. It's when I would add images or historical documents, other primary sources, quotations, and put them on different pieces of chart paper. I then would hang them all around the room and the students would have to act like they're in a gallery, so be really quiet as they went around to each of the pictures and add little post-its to each of them with their thoughts, things they noticed, any observations, we would then come back together as a class and discuss their findings. Now to do this on Jamboard, it can work very similarly. So you create a Jamboard that you share with the class and on each one of those Jamboards, you add a different picture or historical document or text that you want them to examine. As students either work individually or in breakout rooms, they can go through each of the slides and add their own thoughts and observations, things that they noticed. 
you then come back as a whole class to debrief the gallery walk together. So the fourth way to use Jamboard would be to create graphic organizers that you can use for mini lessons during your live instruction. So there are two ways to do this on Jamboard. The first would be to use a graphic organizer that you can find in the Google image search or one from your own files. So if you want to insert a graphic organizer from Google, you can click the add image button, then go to the Google search and search for whatever graphic organizer you want to use. I'm going to try to find a Venn diagram, I'll select one that looks good to me, and insert it directly into the Jamboard. I then can resize the image. Now do keep in mind that you cannot set this as a background, but you can write directly onto the image. And now it's all ready to use. The second way to do this would be to create your own graphic organizers using the shape tools in Jamboard. So for example, if I wanted them to create a Venn diagram comparing reptiles and amphibians, I would make the Venn diagram and then duplicate it to make enough copies for each of the groups as they go out into breakout rooms. So this time I'm going to use that shape tool to create my graphic organizer. Since it is a Venn diagram, I will select the circles, create two large circles, and I can just copy and paste the first one that I made. I can then change the transparency so it becomes a Venn diagram. Now I want my students to have their own copies to work on in groups. So I will go up to the top and then I can click these three little dots and it will duplicate the slide. I then can duplicate to make enough copies for each group to work on. Then when they go out to breakout rooms, they are able to work together to add all the facts or images to fill out their Venn diagram. So the fifth way to use Jamboard with your students is to use it for annotations. So because it is an interactive whiteboard, you're able to highlight, to write, to draw. And what I do is I take a screenshot of whatever presentation or worksheet that I want my students to see, and then I'm able to write directly on it. Then I can easily make a copy of that worksheet and have my students work in breakout rooms to discuss the article or highlight and add their own annotations. My sixth way to use Jamboard and the final one I'm going to mention today really ties those last five ways together and that is to use them during breakout rooms. To organize this, I share one Jamboard with the whole class and then each breakout room is in charge of one slide on that Jamboard. I then add a sticky note to each of those slides and they type up their name so I know exactly who is working on each slide. I then can easily see all of the slides as they're working in their breakout rooms and I can hop between the breakout rooms to join in their discussions. You could do this for graffiti walls, for discussions, for using those Venn diagrams, really any of those ways I mentioned before so that they have that chance to talk with their classmates and get that peer collaboration. Thank you so much for watching. Jamboard is such a great collaborative tool to use in the virtual classroom and also as an interactive whiteboard. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments down below. If you found any of these tips helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also grab those free exit board templates with the link in the description below, and I'll see you next time. Bye everybody.